Alright, so this is going to be a video showing off the first six boss fights that I have uh, redesigned on my Minecraft server. Um, each of these fights has a boss display bar where it shows you what the health of the boss is. Um, every boss has a specific mechanic uh, that makes the fight fun and interesting. So this guy every 30 seconds will summon uh, some ads. That uh, white glow that you saw with uh, the boss earlier, that is a special attack. So what happens is they will, uh, anytime a boss glows like that, um, if the player is not blocking, then when hit, they'll take either a bunch of damage, or in the case of this boss, um, they will uh, stun the player and then give the adds a speed bonus. Um, blocking the attack uh, nullifies the effect, so allows you to bypass uh, a lot of that, so you have to pay attention to uh, sort of that glowing effect on the boss. A lot of these bosses uh, are easier right now. Uh, later on we'll see some stuff with higher phases and different uh, combat strategies. They get a lot more hectic. So this guy, every uh, little bit he'll drop, um, he'll summon, er, every couple hundred uh, damage he'll summon an ad. And if you kill all of the ads, um, if there's no ads in existence, then what happens is he goes berserk for five seconds, which gives him a massive uh, speed buff. So he'll basically be uh, flying around the arena like crazy right now. And then that wears off, and you can go back and fight him normally. Um, if you kill a, the boss while there is an ad, or mul multiple still in existence, the adds despawn. So you don't really have to worry about fighting those guys, or cleaning up after the boss is dead. That's basically all that matters. Um, every boss drops an insignia, which can be, if you shift and right click, it will give you an item. So um, this could be anything from materials to custom uh, weapons and armor. Um, basically a nice little like unique thing that, uh, unique reward for each boss fight. So next up is Olgrith. Now this guy is uh, a little bit more difficult than the previous guys. The previous ones had one mechanic, this guy has a couple more. So every time he uh, drops 100 health, he summons three little goblin guys to ate him in the battle. He also has two other mechanics. One is uh, what you just saw, which is he jumps up into the air, and <laughs> when he lands, he sends out a shockwave that stuns the player. Um, that second mechanic, which was the glow mechanic, is if you don't block that, uh, he gains a speed buff and does a ton of damage, which is not great. So, the idea is to basically <laughs> kind of take him out uh, fairly quickly and kind of manage how many goblins you're dealing with uh, in the arena at once. And I'm gonna die! a little closer than usual, but <laughs> that works. <laughs> so, anyway, next up we have uh, perhaps one of my favorite fights here. Uh, this is the Ilfang Necromancer. 
Now, uh, this guy is a lot of fun. So, he's got a thousand health, and this is the first fight that has multiple phases to it. So, every time you drop him 200 health, uh, he turns invincible and summons some adds to join him in the fight. Now, the red glow on these guys means stay away from them. So, white glow is block the, block the attack because it's a special attack. Um, the red glow means stay away from them. In the case of these guys, if you kill one of the adds and you're too close to it, you take, um, I think, like, harm two or three damage, uh, which is not great, and especially in some of these later waves, um, it gets <laughs> very hectic. Uh, so every 200 health he drops, he summons uh, some adds, four more than last time. So, <laughs> last time he summoned uh, four, now he summoned eight, and then we have two more, <laughs> so 12 and 16. So basically what I'm going to do is run around, pull a bunch of aggro right now, and then kind of just start dropping these guys uh, one at a time. See right there I took uh, damage from <laughs> killing that guy because I was too close. So, as I was saying before, each of these um, boss fights, um, you have different uh, weapons and items, armor and stuff that drops uh, from the insignias afterwards. Each uh, boss has uh, several different achievements that you can get from it. Um, one, obvious, obviously, for killing the boss. Then you have some for, you know, solo, solo the boss, uh, killing the boss in under a certain amount of time. And each uh, boss also has some like, special ones, so um, these are things for like avoiding a uh, special attack or, you know, kill the boss without being withered or, you know, different, uh, different things like that. So uh, there's a lot of uh, fun little challenges and replayability that go into uh, designing these fights. So... Now, this guy, Asidius, he is the first of the <laughs> normal difficulty boss fights. Uh, there's four difficulties. You got super easy... Actually, no, wait. Is there five difficulties? I don't know. Yeah, five difficulties. Super easy uh, is the first two, um, where you got, like, one mechanic each, and then you start having, uh, like, during the easy guys, multiple me mechanics or, you know, different outlandish mechanics. Uh, and then you also have... You know, later on, like this one here, there's m even more stuff that you have to pay attention to. And later on, once you get to the super hard fights, you've got all kinds of mechanics. You know, the mob's glowing, you gotta block this, turn there, shoot that guy, and it it gets very stressful very quickly. But um, that's why I kind of like to order these boss fights in terms of difficulty, so that you can teach the player uh, one mechanic at a time. And... Um, then during the later boss fights, once they already understand all these mechanics, uh, you can have different mechanics happening in tandem and <laughs> make things very stressful on the player. So this one, every 200 health uh, he drops, he changes um, what he does. The floor pattern change, if I stand on one of the emerald blocks down there, I'm actually going to take damage. So if I stand here, <laughs> I end up taking a bit of damage. Um, second phase, he will summon a couple of spider, venom, uh, poison spiders. And the final
final phase, uh, he actually does both. So he'll summon the spiders and change the floor pattern. And one of the bonus achievements for this one is killing the boss without getting poisoned, which, you know, this guy has a poison sword. <laughs> um, the spiders poison you, so basically the uh, one of those bonus achievements is basically kill this boss, which is a lot to manage, without taking damage. <laughs> so, fun, uh, fun little challenge for uh, those achievement hunters out there. Five down, one to go. All right, so this guy here. Uh, he summons adds every couple seconds. Uh, he has two phases. One is when he has health above 300, and then the second phase is um, when he drops below that. Now, killing the adds here, first off, if you're too close to the ad like that, uh, you get a slowness debuff, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, killing these adds spawns plague on the ground, and if I were to stand on that, it would end up giving me... Uh, the wither effect. So, <laughs> the first phase is basically trying to uh, not box yourself in by killing these guys um, all over the arena, as well as uh, dropping this guy fast enough because um, the floor does not reset until you hit uh, 300 health on this guy. And again, I'm using the uh, the red glow on these guys to signify uh, signal to the player that uh, you don't want to stand too close to them. Oh dang! Boxing myself in. So now we almost got him down to 300, I should be able to drop him before the next wave spawns in. Alright, so now uh, he just glows red, he starts radiating with um, an aura of decay. So if I stand too close to him while he's red, um, and you have a 3 second grace period before it actually takes into effect, um, you actually start taking uh, wither damage. And now he's kind of in desperation mode, so every three to five seconds he's going to summon another one of these adds in the middle. Uh, fortunately it's only one at a time, but it can quickly, uh, quickly get out of hand if you're not uh, careful. And there's that wither from standing too close to the <laughs> mycelium there. That's it for the uh, the boss fights for now. So 
every boss drops a custom item and weapon set or armor set. Um, the custom armor has different uh, attributes on it, so they might increase max health or your movement speed, attack damage, things like that. And um, custom weapons, uh, much like the uh, the bosses that have the uh, glowing effect, uh, some have passive effects like the toxic blade, which um, whenever you hit a target with that, it causes uh, poison for three seconds. Other ones have um, what I call a lucky strike or special attack, and same thing if you <laughs> shift and right click, you activate this um, five second window, which if you hit your target within that uh, time frame, um, some effect takes place. So in, case, in the case of the Holy Blade, for example, um, its special effect is if you hit a target within that five second window, you deal double damage to undead. So during uh, certain boss fights and such, it's uh, fairly useful. Um, fighting the Wither, same thing, very useful. Um, there's, uh, if you wear the full armor set uh, from a specific boss, you also gain a set bonus. So something like the uh, Dreamweaver set that makes you immune to the levitation effect. And so <laughs> fighting end cities and whatnot, you're not getting pelted by uh, shulkers the whole time. Uh, kind of handle some annoyance there. Also handling different um, boss effects and, and whatnot. Uh, there's like a po poison immunity one, which is really good for uh, Asidious. And then, you know, you also have, as far as like the design aspect, um, you know, balancing both for PvE as well as PvP, uh, which I'll probably talk about a bit, little bit later at a later date, but bottom line is I, I don't want to design anything that is too overpowered in terms of PvP. I don't want there to be just one absolute best in slot a weapon or item armor set. Uh, things like that. Um, everything's going to have some kind of counter to it, and it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the players come up with in terms of um, PvP. Because you've got a hot bar, you've got multiple uh, weapons and such, so uh, it'll be interesting to see you know people switching to different weapons uh, based off of what their opponents are using and and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. Uh, for, an all for now, that's, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys.